Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to explain one way to set up Octoprint with the DSLR camera so you can take clean time lapses of your 3D prints. I know that most people prefer their how-to videos to be devoid of personality or comedy to avoid any sense of connection or entertainment, thereby perpetuating an air of hopelessness and a forgotten world of hopes and dreams that may or may not bring about the end of society as we know it. So let's just get right to it. There are multiple plugins you can use in Octoprint to take time lapses of your prints, like Octolapse, but when I tried to set up Octolapse to use my DSLR camera following a guide I found online, it turned out to be more of a hassle than it was worth. And by the time I figured out how to make it do what I wanted it to, it was just easier to control the camera myself with G-code commands. If you're looking for a way to view the pictures in Octoprint or store them on your Raspberry Pi SD card so you can download them in your browser, this isn't the guide for you. The end result of this video is that on every layer change, your hot end will move out of the way of the print to a specified location and your DSLR camera will take a picture and store it to the SD card in your camera. After that, you can take the images and create a time lapse video with them. I will be using a Raspberry Pi 3B Plus with a 32GB SD card and I will be using a Nikon D5300 DSLR camera for the time lapses. Your results may vary depending on what you're using instead. So to start, we need to go to the Octoprint website and download the latest Octoprint software image to install on our SD card. At the time of me making this video, that is version 0.18.0, .0, but there may be a newer version if you're following along later. Open the zip file and extract the image file to a location on your computer that you will remember. After that, we'll need to go download a program called Belena Etcher to write the software to your SD card. You can find links to download these in the description below. After installing Belena Etcher, you'll need to connect your SD card to your computer via an SD card reader. I have a couple of them that came with printers I've bought in the past, but if you don't have a way to connect your SD card, you'll have to work that out first. Next, you'll open the Belena Etcher software, select the Octoprint image you just downloaded, and select the SD card as the target. Then just click the flash button and wait for it to finish writing the software to the SD card. If any windows pop up asking you to format your disk, make sure you exit out of those. If you do format the disk, you'll have to start all over. After that's done, you can close the Belena Etcher software, and you may need to disconnect and reconnect your SD card reader to get the SD card to show up in Windows Explorer. Next, we have to modify a file on the SD card to set up our Octoprint image. So open your SD card in Windows Explorer and find the file octopi-wpa-supplicant.txt. You'll most likely want to edit it with something like Notepad++ because some other text editors can change the special characters in that file and make it unreadable for your Linux installation. Assuming you're using a wireless router with WPA or WPA2 security, if you have to enter a password to get on your network, odds are good that's what you have. In that file, find the section called WPA slash WPA2 secure network and remove the hashtags at the start of the bottom four lines of that section. In the SSID section between the quotes, add the name of your Wi-Fi or whatever shows up on your wireless devices. And in the PSK section between the quotes, put your Wi-Fi password. You will also need to scroll down to the bottom and find the section about which country your Pi is in, assuming you're using a Raspberry Pi 3B Plus like I am. United Kingdom is uncommented by default, so I'm going to add a hashtag at the start of that line to comment it out and remove the hashtag from the country equals US line. After that, make sure you save the file, then go to your system tray, right click on the icon for your SD card reader and choose eject disk to make sure it's safe to remove. Then you can take your SD card, put it in your Raspberry Pi and turn it on. Next, open Octoprint in your browser by going to octopi.local and you should see a setup wizard. Create a new username and password. This will be the username and password you use to log into Octoprint anytime you want to use it. Follow through the wizard and choose any settings that you prefer. For the Configure the Connectivity Check page, the default settings should be fine, so you can enable Connectivity Check if you want, but that should be optional. Also on the Set Up Your Printer Profile page, you can configure a printer if you want to, but that's also optional. And you should have the option to change any of these settings later from the Settings menu. So when you're done, click on Finish to get into Octoprint. 
Now we need to update Octoprint to the latest version, and we can do that in the settings menu easily enough. So click on the wrench icon at the top, select software update in the left hand list, then just click the update button under current versions. Click on proceed and wait for Octoprint to finish installing the updates. The next steps will require some work in the Linux command line. If you're not comfortable with that, no worries. It's pretty simple and you just have to follow along step by step. First, we will need to go download a program called Putty to use to connect to our Raspberry Pi remotely. There are other options like connecting a monitor and a keyboard directly to your Raspberry Pi, but this way is easier to me. So after you've installed Putty, open it and the first page that comes up should be the session page which looks like this. In the host name or IP address box, enter octopi.local, then click the open button at the bottom to connect to your Raspberry Pi. You may get a warning the first time you try to connect that says something like warning potential security breach, but just click the accept button at the bottom to connect to it anyway. When the command prompt comes up, you'll see login as. Here you will just enter lowercase pi pi as the username and lowercase raspberry as the password. Note when you enter passwords in Linux, you won't see any characters display in the command line, so make sure you type it carefully to get the password correct. Press enter and it should load into the main command prompt for your Linux installation. At this point, it's a good idea to change the admin password for the Pi user, so go ahead and type sudo raspy-config. It may ask for the admin password for the Pi user, so just enter lowercase raspberry again and press enter. This will bring up the Raspberry Pi software configuration tool. You can use this to change the password and some other settings like network options, but in this case, just select the change user password option and press enter. This will bring you back to the command line where you can enter a new password for the Pi user. So type in your new password and press enter and retype it if it asks you to. At this point, you can use the arrow keys in the configuration tool to move to the bottom of the list and hit the right arrow a few times to get to the finish button. With finish selected, press enter to get back to the main command prompt. Next, we'll need to install gphoto2 because this is what we'll be using to control the DSLR camera. So once you get back to the Linux command line, enter the command sudo apt-get update and press enter. It will probably ask for your password, so enter that password again. Wait for that to finish installing the update, then enter the command sudo apt-get install gphoto2. It may take a little while for that to install, but when it's done, you should see some text similar to what I have on my screen here. If you see any error messages, you may need to try again. I've had a few issues with it failing to install on the first try in the past, but normally everything goes smoothly. Anyway, once that's done, you can verify gphoto2 is installed by typing the command gphoto2 and pressing enter. It should give you a big list of ways that you can use the gphoto2 command in Linux, but we don't have to worry about that too much for now. At this point, you can type a command to make sure that gphoto2 recognizes your camera. First, make sure your camera is connected to your Raspberry Pi via USB. Make sure it's turned on. Then you can enter the command gphoto2 auto detect. It should give you some information about your camera specifically. You can see here mine shows Nikon D5300. You can also test to make sure that gphoto will tell your camera to take pictures by entering the following command. So assuming you've got all of that working correctly, now you can close the command prompt window because we won't need that anymore. Go back into Octoprint in your browser to the settings menu again, go to the plugin manager, click on get more and search for gcode system commands. This is a pretty simple plugin that lets you execute commands on the command line by adding keywords to your gcode. Install that plugin and it may ask you to restart Octoprint again. After it's done installing and restarting, we'll go to our settings menu one last time. At the bottom of the left menu, you should see G-Code system commands under the plugins section. Click on that and click on the plus sign under command definitions to add a new command. You can choose whatever number octo you want, but I chose octo one. Then under system, enter the command gphoto2 dash dash auto detect blah 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 blah. Click on the save button at the bottom and you're good to go. 
If your printer is connected and turned on and your camera is connected and turned on, you can go to the terminal tab in OctoPrint and make sure it works by sending the command Octo1 or whatever number you chose. Now the last step is to modify your slicer settings to send this command on every layer change. In Prusa Slicer, I added these settings to the After Layer Change G-Code section. At this point, all you need to do is slice a file to print, drag the G-Code to Octoprint in your browser to upload it to the SD card, and click the Print button to start a print. However, before you do start a print, you should make sure that your camera is set up where you want it. In the case of my camera, I set it to manual mode, made sure the ISO and aperture are good enough for what I need, and turned off autofocus. That means I had to manually focus the camera on the correct location on the printer before starting. This ensures that every picture will look the same and make for a cleaner time lapse in the end. Anyway, I know some of you are probably thinking, oh god, this is too easy. And some of you are thinking, that seems entirely too complicated. For those of you in the latter group, I'd say it's really not as bad as it seems. There are lots of steps to follow, but when you've done it a few times, it's really not that bad. I am no expert on Linux by any means, and somehow I managed to figure it out by googling around and watching YouTube videos. If you run into any issues, feel free to ask in the comments section, but I can't guarantee I'll be able to help. That being said, Linux people are often keen on displaying their intellectual prowess, so for the group who thought this was too easy, feel free to help anybody who didn't find it so easy. Links to any of the software mentioned in this video and all of the necessary Linux commands should be in the description below, so worst case scenario, you can always copy and paste. Uh, for those of you who are normally here for my dumb sense of humor and actually made it this far in the video, thanks for sticking around. I am working on another video at the moment, but it's going to take some time, so I wanted to make this video to fulfill my every 1-3 to three month upload streak. If there's anything specifically you'd like to see on my channel, feel free to leave a suggestion down in the comment section. I did get a good suggestion on one of my last videos that I've been wanting to do, I just haven't worked out the logistics of it yet. But I do intend to give it a shot at some point. Anyway, if this video was at all helpful to you, feel free to click the like or subscribe button. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time!